Hey everyone, thank you for joining us uh, again for our E3 coverage for Polygon.com. I am Griffin McElroy. This is my co-host, my colleague, my brother in games, Justin McElroy. Also my brother, just sort of in life. Uh, joining us today is Craig Duncan from Rare to tell us a little bit about Rare Replay, the 30-game collection uh, that is coming out for Xbox One uh, relatively soon, right? It's out in, in August? Yeah, 4th of August, so we announced the date when we, uh, when we announced the collection in the Xbox briefing yesterday, which is exciting. Uh, so, so tell me, is this is is the rare replay? Is that sort of a, a, a revival for you? Because I feel like the the rare that we know today is pretty different uh, from the rare that we knew when a lot of these games were being released in in the the '90s and the early aughts. Uh, is is this you all you know moving back toward that a little bit? I uh, I think the rare that everyone knows is different would be the way I'd answer that question, and something rare is done continuously. You know, over 30 years, uh, and just the very fact Rare's been around as a studio for 30 years shows how they've evolved and changed and reinvented themselves. Um, for, for us, this was really about, you know, we knew our 30th anniversary was coming up. We wanted to celebrate that. We wanted to celebrate that in a very, like, we have some hugely passionate fans that love everything we do from all different generations. And, you know, we kind of wrote this idea on the whiteboard. It's like, hey, could we do a 30-year kind of retrospective compilation of everything Rare's done and behind the scenes and developer interviews about where these games came from. Uh, and then we just got really excited about the idea and, and we said, hey, next year at E3, we want to celebrate our 30th anniversary and announce a brand new IP. Wouldn't that be awesome? And then we got really excited about that plan and, and just worked our asses off. And yesterday we announced our collection to celebrate our 30th anniversary and we announced a brand new IP so um, yeah it was exciting big day for the studio yesterday okay 30 games that's a lot of games there has to be some filler on there what game do you hate the most <laughs> of those 30 games which one are you just like oh I can't believe we had to put this one on this one stinks the, the ones I hate are the ones that didn't make the 30 list so oh, okay. Rare, Rare, Rare has made hundreds of games. Like, I think when we did the count, it was like 180, 190 games. And if you remember Rare back in the, I guess, sort of like mid, mid to late 80s, early 90s, Rare actually did a lot of licensed games as well. Mm -hmm. So, again, when we sort of put our pillars together for what, the, what games we were going to include, it was, it was really about games that Rare had created the characters and created the worlds. So anything that was kind of like not created by Rare, but Rare helped develop it. It was like, okay, scratch all that stuff. And then uh, and then we wrote, we had all of the IP up on a big wall, and then we said, okay, let's go back and replay all these games. And there was some, to your point, not every game Rare's made has been a masterpiece. <laughs> and, and there were some that we, and I'm not going to name them, but <laughs> there, were, there were some games that just don't play well anymore, and uh, and they didn't make the cut. So we, we, we ended up with a really strong 30. Um, I, I love the collection we've put together. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't want to tell you how to run your business, but if you had included 180 games, you could have sold it for 180 dollars, <laughs> which is a lot more than That's 30 dollars. Um, so, is is the rare replay also kind of a test to to test the waters and see what the interest level is in, in these 30 games to see, you know, if we can get, if if that's the case, Viva Pinata is the answer, and just go ahead and do a new Viva Pinata, please. The thing is, you're not even the first person that said that to me today. Never never mind this week, but it, it's what's, working. What's great is is everyone has their favorite rare game, and they're the rare game that means a lot to them for for you know multiple different reasons. So if you're familiar with everything Rare's done, then the collection is just this huge fan service with all these Easter eggs in it. Um, if you're a massive Viva Piñata fan, maybe you've not been exposed to Banjo. You know, maybe Banjo is, is a game that, you know, had never been on your radar. And just allowing people to experience that whole 30 years of heritage for, for $30 or £20 in the UK is just like it's, it's a steal. Like, and we didn't do it for that. I'd, I'd rather everyone owned it and we made less money then you know, we tried to kind of get a few more dollars out of every every uh, purchase of it. Are you are you surprised on which games people are excited? You you mentioned that I'm not the first person to tell you about Viva my Viva Pinata passion. Some might call it a fetish. Uh, is 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 there stuff like that that's surprising to you? Like a lot of uh, a lot of people who are like, oh man, I can't wait for for Conker's Bad Fur Day. Well, that's actually pretty that, mainstream. Yeah, there's some a, there's right. some deep cuts in this in this mix. Yeah, I mean we. Um, we were at the fan showcase event last night uh, at the Majestic, and 
yeah, so I was there just chatting to fans, chatting to to press, and you know, we had three stations there, with, and we've we haven't brought everything with us to E3 because we're going to be at Comic Con, we'll have some different games on show there, but I think two out of the three stations for the whole fan event had Battletoads Arcade on them the whole time we were there. And, and the reason for that, one is, I think, it's an arcade machine. So generally, you know, arcades are hard to find now. Arcades that had that very limited run of Battletoads arcade games are hard to find. And the other thing is the, the game is still visceral and stands up, and it, it's just awesome, cooperative fun now. So, so that seems to be getting, like, when people hear that's on there, that seems to be getting a lot of um, just kudos and, and excitement. But, you know, there's VP fans, there's diehard Banjo fans, there's, you know, even like, you know, older gamers, you know, kind of my generation that go back to some of these Spectrum classics like Night Law and Attic Attack. And like people grew up on these games, so they just have such a fond memory of, of what those games meant to them. Um, video game companies almost never do this. Like, yeah. it's so rare to see someone look back, like actually take stock of like, what have we done? What have we achieved? Uh, I was hoping you could talk to me about what that experience has been like for the studio and the team, and if anything, you've sort of unearthed through that process is going to make its way into the collection. That, you know, sorts of ancillary things. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's unlike anything I've ever done before. The more we talked about this idea internally, the more excited we all got about the idea, and then it was then it was really like, what what else can we put in? So, I mean, it's easy to kind of say, hey. You know, 30 years, 30 games, six generations of, of gaming. You know, and we did a, you know, like, you know, these are the kind of games that Gen Xers would like, Gen Y, Gen Z, and, you know, depending on when you grew up. And then then it was like, hey, we should get the developers back that made these games the first time, and we should, like, ask them, like, how these characters came about and, and really tell us the origin story of these games. And we had so much fun doing that, we just did more and more and more of it. And, like, there's over an hour of like origin stories of where games came from and 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 you're absolutely right you know as an industry we don't collect history very well you know i can go back and listen to any piece of music in the last 50 years same with film but like for video games every time we change a generation we lose the past and we wanted to just go back and and really tell that story from rare's origin right up to you know the very latest like xbox 360 games with all of the developer stories about you know what what excited them about the games we've also put in some uh prototypes of videos of prototypes of games we never released so you know there's stories in there of like hey you know rare made this prototype and we had this game and this is why we never kind of took it forward but here's some of the concept art here's some of the footage and here's some of the developers talking to it as which is exciting as, as nice as it must have be been from an emotional perspective, it, it has to be, it sounds like kind of a technical nightmare. Yeah. Is it as bad as it sounds, like, as I imagine it would be? Yeah, I mean, we had a corridor that was literally full of boxes with tapes and source code. And I, like, I mean, I, I've been running Rare for four years. Like, I don't want to speak ill of my kind of predecessors. They didn't archive very well. Like, I think it's okay to diss their organizational <laughs> skills. Like, that's fine. Like, I'll dump on Griffin's organizational skills, and he's right here next to me. We, 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 were, we were, like, you know, and we really kind of went back to, you know, and got all these boxes out of the basement. And it's everything from, you know, agreements and, and licensing kind of agreements right through to, you know, source code and ROM files. And, like, yeah, and it... For, the good thing is we've got some super wicked smart engineers that love like the technical challenge of it. And then when we said, hey, we're going to put this on one compilation and you're going to launch it as a, a, a menu that has all of these old games and we're going to treat them um, with this love and nostalgia. Like we just got so excited about it. And the team literally from day one on the project has been buzzing like r right up until we announced yesterday and, you know, some of the team are here at E3 and, and showing the game and, and getting that feedback from the fans. Mm. We've still got a, a core team back at the studio that are just fixing a few last issues and just getting us ready for our August launch date. Um, one last question. Uh, you were speaking a little bit about the bonus content that will be included in the package. And yeah. I have heard that one of the things that is new is uh, in Battletoads, uh, an infinite turbo tunnel mode. Uh, is that, yes. that is true. Okay. I guess follow-up question. Are you the devil? Am I the devil? That's the hardest part of any video game ever. And you said, I'm going to make it infinite. And I'm going to trap Battletoads players in a prison I, of infinite turbo tunnel. 
I, I'm going to give the credit to this to uh, Khan, who's one of our engineers, and uh, Chris, who's one of our designers. So one of the modes we have in the game is snapshots. So rather than so you remember games back then like Battletoads didn't have game saves. Right. Like so you started get you know started level one and you just played it through. So the snapshot mode really allows you to go in experience the legendary or iconic bits of those games in challenge type ways. So the Infinite Turtle Tunnel, what we do is we run that level of the game, you know, with the original source code, and then we say hey, we've done a modification that we're going to make it a time-based challenge. So now it's like, it's not about getting through the turbo tunnel level, it's about you saying how long you can last in that turbo tunnel level, which, you know, games are hard. These games are really hard. And <laughs> we thought we'd put some challenge in that, you know, really test them out. Like, I, I remember playing these games. I remember being good at them. I've gone back and replayed them now. Like, my reactions aren't as good as they used to be. Right. These games no. are tough. I was, I was high on pixie sticks back then. My, my reflexes were insane. <laughs> That's it. But, you know, it, it's now a challenge to, hey, you can get through Turbo Tunnel, but how long can you last in the infinite Turbo Tunnel? Not very long at all. Uh, Craig Duncan from Rare, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, playing Viva Pinata and all those other games. But <laughs> this is, uh, no, it's, it's, I'm very excited about Rare Replay. Thank you for joining us to tell us a little bit more. Uh, and thank, thank you all for thank you all for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more E3 coverage throughout the week.